Minnesota Senator Karen Housley is the chair of the Aging and Long-Term Care Committee. Senator, what came out of this morning's hearing? Uh, we're hoping for some good news for our seniors. Um, well, actually, it wasn't, it wasn't the best of news, uh, but we did come out with a bipartisan agreement that both the Democrats and the Republicans on the committee agree that our seniors need to be the top priority. Right now, you're looking at the vaccine rollout, and it's the, the seniors, the, the, the vaccines that are going, should be going to seniors, is being diluted right now with uh, educators and, and healthy and younger workers that are actually getting, trying to get into that lottery and take vaccines away from seniors. So it's, it's, it, was, it was very clear that how disappointing that this rollout has been, and so that needs to be fixed immediately. What are some of the specific issues? We know that last week when the rollout happened, there was a crash because the demand is so high, technology crashing as far as like the website went down, people weren't able to get through on the telephone. But what are some of the other specifics that we're seeing problems with? Um, well, you know, it's, what's really a, a huge problem is our seniors deserve better than a lottery system to get the vaccine. We've got uh, around the country, you can go in Ohio, you can walk into a Kroger's grocery store if you're over 65 years old and you're in and out in five minutes with the vaccine. Yet here in Minnesota, you sign up for a website, you wait an hour, it crashes, you call on the phone and they say to go to the website. And, and many of these seniors, they don't even know how to operate a uh, uh, the internet. So that is extremely frustrating for them. But even more frustrating is when they're watching the news at night and they're seeing that all of these uh, uh, prisoners are getting their vaccines ahead of them. They've been locked up for almost a year and they're seeing young, healthy people uh, getting the vaccine. Right now in the state of Minnesota, as of yesterday, only 8% of our seniors have gotten the vaccination. We've gotten 350,000 vaccines and 20% of those vaccines have gone to seniors, but we have 920,000 seniors in the state of Minnesota, all on this hamster wheel, trying to figure out how do I get the vaccine? Where do I get the vaccine? How long is it gonna take me to drive to one of these pilot sites? So only 8% of them are getting the vaccine and we know they are the highest at risk for dying from this, this virus. Karen, help me understand, because we have not reported on prisoners getting the vaccine before our long-term care facilities. So this is the first that I'm hearing of it, and therefore I uh, think that this is the first time our viewers are hearing of this. Is that what's happening in Minnesota? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It was on the front page of our, our local newspaper here that uh, some of the first vaccines went out to the prisoners. One of them was a sex offender who got the vaccine ahead of the seniors. And, and just today, Governor Walls uh, took 15,000 vaccines um, out of storage and set up a vaccine site at, at the XL Energy Center for young, healthy workers, educators, and childcare uh, workers to go get the vaccine. And if you look at all of the data, they aren't the people that are dying from this virus. It is those 98% of those folks uh, 60 and older are who are dying from the virus, not these young, healthy people. And somehow they're getting the vaccine uh, ahead of our seniors, and that is absolutely wrong. Why are we not hearing more of an outcry, not only from lawmakers, but I mean, we keep hearing from our viewers and, and people who have parents in these long-term care facilities, but we're not hearing enough about uh, this. We have been hearing a lot about teachers, and there is no disputing the fact teachers need to get vaccinated as well. But if we've only got 8% in these long-term care facilities where all of a large majority of the deaths are happening, this seems like it should be a much louder cry. And it is a huge cry for us and our constituents. And I know Senator Senjim and Senator Nelson in Rochester are hearing from, from the constituents in Rochester, and we're hearing it here in the Twin Cities. But the governor, with his executive powers, isn't listening to them. He's not listening to us, which is why we have to help hold these committee hearings. And it's it's just extremely frustrating that uh, he's he's... He's not listening to any of us, and it's our seniors who are the ones who are suffering. And you're right. We need to have a huge outcry, and we will continue to uh, keep pushing the Department of Health and the governor for some accountability and making sure that our seniors are put first ahead of everybody. I keep saying this is, this is not rocket science. This is very simple. You have 90% uh, of our deaths happening uh, for those 65 and older, 90%. So that means, in my book, 
90% of the people getting the vaccines first should be those 65 and older. Start with your oldest Minnesotan, work backwards, those with underlying conditions, get it to them first. I know our teachers and our educators um, would be willing to wait to keep our seniors safe. Uh, if I can take a quick break and keep you for just two more minutes, I do want to talk more about um, this, but to branch off, if we can talk about those who are also considered high risk, who are trying to figure out where do they fall in the category as far as tiers go with uh, being vaccinated. So can you hang with me just two minutes? Yep. Okay, we'll be right back. I'm continuing the conversation about our seniors in Minnesota, those who are 65 and older and the vaccination, the rollout of the system that started last week and some of the issues that we've been having. We heard about some of those before the break. Senator Karen Halsley is on the committee for our aging uh, population and there was a hearing this morning. but. I, I want to talk a little bit more about the senior care facilities with only 8% being uh, given the vaccination at this point. What are the plans in moving forward and uh, what can people do to, it's one thing to contact your lawmaker, but if they're not the ones who can really say or do something at this point, what can people do? Um, you're absolutely correct. These assisted living homes, these, these poor folks in there that haven't even been able to have a meal or play bridge with their, with their friends, they've been locked up for so long. And we have finally got the nursing homes done, but our assisted living, we've only had 50% of them done. And, and I asked the department today, what is the plan going forward? I feel like the, pan, the plan was botched up to this point when we only have 8% of those uh, vaccinated up to this point. And did you know, we had the vaccination here December 23rd is when the vaccination came to Minnesota. And since December 23rd, 1,210 seniors have died from COVID just in the last month. Every single day that goes by that that vaccination doesn't get into the arm of the seniors is another senior could possibly die. We so uh, it's, it's just completely been botched. And then I asked for the plan going forward mm -hmm. and they don't really know. So that part is ex extremely frustrating. We have people who lobby on behalf of assisted living facilities. I've spoken to leaders of these groups uh, just throughout this pandemic. Uh, what about having them, you know, um, appeal to the governor? And they are, I can tell you they are, because I talk to them every single day. Uh, and they want to know the plan too, because these residents want to get back to regular life as soon as possible. And and they get excuses like these. this set of vaccines came from the federal government. Um, we need to, actually they said today, to sprinkle all, all sectors of Minnesota. So everybody gets a little bit, they want to organize an equitable distribution of the vaccine. And I, I, I totally don't believe in it's been chaos and equitable. I think if you want to talk equitable, it should be equal to those who have the highest risk of dying. So you're right. The um, those that, that lobby on behalf of the long term care facilities, they are. Um, but I don't know who else is lobby lobbying Governor Walls in the department because there are other folks that are getting it ahead of our seniors and it is completely wrong. Tell me why you don't like the lottery system. When I first heard that we were going to move to that kind of way of distributing the vaccines, I thought, huh, I don't know if that is going to feel fair for those who need it most. Um, first, it's fair to those who have access to a computer uh, and many of our seniors don't. Secondly, the, the company that they hired is a new startup company. It's only been around for nine months. It's out of California and it keeps crashing. And there are no safeguards in there that a person can't go in there and actually um, buy 10 lottery tickets or you know sign up 10 times. And I have somebody who I know that did it. 10 different email addresses, 10 different phone numbers. And then you are, are pitting seniors against seniors and you have them living next door to each other and you know, I got in, but oh, sorry, you didn't get in. So now that person is hated and that person's husband didn't get in. So tell me that a, a senior is going to drive an hour to Marshall, Minnesota to get the vaccine, but her husband has to stay at home because he didn't get it this lottery time. And why is the website only open for 24 hours? Last week it was only open uh, for like five hours and kept crashing. This time it's open for 24 hours. It makes absolutely no sense. And again, it's not that complicated. Take your highest at risk, oldest age, underlying conditions, 
work backwards, and then do everybody else. 65 and older should be first. We have been uh, focusing on the top tier group, those who are at a high risk, uh, the 65 and older and teachers a lot within this last week. But what about the other people who have underlying health conditions who are considered high risk? Where do they fall? Do you know where do they fall in uh, the tier system on priorities? And we're not getting any clear answers on where those with, with many underlying conditions that are at high risk. I'm guessing they're in this same merge, I call it a merge, are also diluting the, the uh, uh, vaccination. But what's interesting is when he's piling in, the governor's piling in all of these educators and, and actually in their 1B it says transportation workers, ag workers. I don't know who else is coming into this, but I do know when we asked this morning in the meeting, um, if teachers are getting vaccinated and child care workers are getting vaccinated, does that mean that the kids and the teachers are going back to school? Because, you know, we've seen schools that are open and there, there is. But there are a lot of schools that we know yep. that are not. And they and we just found out yesterday, many of them most likely will not go back this year. Right. So that's what doesn't make sense to me. Why are they healthy, uh, healthy, young, 40 year old school teachers getting it ahead? of anybody who's high risk that is absolutely wrong and yeah people should be they should be livid and they should be uh emailing the governor they should they should uh uh give them a call call the department of health um let them know because they haven't made they can change it they can change it at any second like they did from last week to this week so the the more that that people let them know that come on just please do our most vulnerable first Okay, Senator Karen Housley, thank you for this. Uh, we need a lot more answers. So when you get some, will you let me know so that we can pass that along? Because sometimes it comes out in a news release. Sometimes we hear it from other media, but we need to let people know. Absolutely. We're putting that letter together, the bipartisan letter with those from um, our committee today to let the governor know that this is where we stand bipartisanly. And we will be doing a press conference on Monday to keep the pressure on. So thank you so much for having me. You bet. We'll be following it on Monday as well. Karen, thank you.